Hey guys, Matt from East. We're here in my home garage. Today we're going to talk about my top three tips for TIG welding sheet metal. So let's get started. All right, number one tip for TIG welding sheet metal is concerning your tungsten choice or how you set your tungsten up. Now my personal preference for tungsten choice and torch choice is using this little WP9 mini torch with a 332nd tungsten and a gas lens on the end there. Now that is what works best for me for all around welding. I can use this torch for short runs on some heavier material and it's also small enough that I can fit it into tight areas and manipulate it when working on the car and doing sheet metal work. Now why do I choose 332nd tungsten? That's again because it's probably the best all around. It can handle doing thicker stuff, but I can also sharpen it to a very sharp point with the tungsten grinder and do more fine work like we're doing here with sheet metal. And as long as you grind the tip to a sharp point and keep it at a sharp point, you will be just fine for doing more intricate work like this. Now the tungsten that I choose is the E3 or Purple Band Torch. That is a pretty much all around tungsten that you can use for sheet metal, uh, aluminum, heavier steel, stainless, and anything else, and it will work with all those different types of metals. I would just suggest to regrind it if you're changing the material that you're welding on. So that's my number one tip for welding sheet metal with a TIG welder. All right, so number two tip for TIG welding sheet metal is kind of a loaded tip, if you will. It is your filler wire uh, choice and also your welder amperage setup. So for filler wire, you want to try and match as well as you can the uh, thickness of the filler wire to the material that you're actually welding. So if you're welding 20 gauge or 18 gauge, you want to try and figure out the decimal uh, equation of that and match your filler wire pretty close to that. If you can't find filler wire that is an exact match, it's always good to actually go a little smaller in size with your filler wire than your base material. The reason I like doing that is because you don't want to have filler wire that takes more heat to melt than your base material because what will end up happening is that your base material will end up blowing a big hole in it and so while you're trying to melt that filler wire and it can cause more problems than it, than it can help. Now what that does require for using thinner wire is that you have to feed more wire or be more conscious of the puddle to make sure that you're not blowing through. I like to use as an all around, uh, all purpose uh, filler wire for sheet metal work is 035 filler wire. You can get this right off of your MIG gun if you don't do a lot of sheet metal work and you can straighten it out or you can buy it in bulk and you can get straight sections like this but do realize you have to buy it in bulk usually five or ten pound packs from your local welding supply store. Now amperage when welding. A good rule of thumb is one amp for every thousandth of uh, thick material thickness when you're welding. Now, that is a good kind of base uh, starting point, but that isn't always the case when you're welding on older vehicles where the metal that you're trying to weld your new patch to may actually be just a little bit thinner from years of, of uh, work or possibly it's a little thinner because of uh, rust that's happened to it. It's just a little bit thinner and that can actually cause it to require less amperage and blow holes in it. Uh, again, what I like to do is kind of match it to my filler wire. So if I have a thinner filler wire like 035 and I'm welding 18 or 20 gauge, uh, which is right uh, just a little bit thicker than the 035 filler wire, I know that the 35 amps will weld and melt the filler wire right into the uh, base material and it should be fine. Now if you're using a foot pedal, you may want to turn the amperage up a little higher. So in that case, if I'm using a foot pedal, I'll actually turn the amperage up to just a few amps higher than what it should be as far as the uh, one amp to one thousandth, uh, a thousandth of material thickness. By doing that, that gives you that play area where you can go from zero to all the way up and you know you can find the sweet spot as you dance around the pedal. Uh, but myself, because I use the TIG 200 digital and the finger switch with the 4T setting, I like to find a kind of middle of the road setting that I can uh, weld pretty quick and also get full penetration. So that is my number two tip, which is pretty loaded, uh, for TIG welding sheet metal. Third tip for TIG welding sheet metal is how do you actually weld the sheet metal without blowing a giant hole in the patch? Now that is a big problem that you'll run into no matter how long you, 
you've been TIG welding sheet metal for, you will find instances, especially on antique or older vehicles, where uh, you will blow through on a panel because it is thinner just from being an old vehicle and whether it had previous welding or maybe some previous grinding work on it that made the metal even thinner, uh, you will find that you're going to blow through, so it happens to all of us. But there are some tips to help you from having that happen all the time and cause a big, giant, warped mess in your patch panel. So, first thing is, how do you actually start a puddle? Uh, a thing I, we see for questions with uh, people that are learning how to TIG weld sheet metal is we always get my puddle just blows away as soon as I hit the, the trigger or the foot pedal, it just blows away and I have a big giant hole in the patch. Uh, so first of all, you wanna make sure that you have your settings all correct and that you're using uh, good filler wire. Uh, number two, you wanna make sure that your patches fit up pretty good. You don't want any kind of big giant holes. So like I mentioned earlier in this video, if you have anything that's like over a 16th of a gap, 1 16th, it's probably too large of a gap and you wanna try and get the panel as close to being a perfect uh, tight fit as you can, uh, but a slight little gap is okay. So when I start my arc, what I usually like to do is I do what's called, what I call my flashlight. So if I'm using the foot pedal, I will just barely hit the foot pedal enough to turn, uh, the, to turn the welder on and start an arc, initiate an arc, and then as soon as I do that, I can kind of situate myself, get myself where I need to be, and ready to start adding my filler wire. Now, if you're using the finger switch on the TIG 200 Digital, like I have set up with the 4T setting, I have it set to start at 10 amps. So when I first click this switch and hold it down, it starts an arc at 10 amps, which is uh, too low to actually like blow through most 99.9% .9 of the time. And I can use that as my flashlight, get myself situated where I need to be, and then get my filler wire ready, and when I let off of this, the trigger, it goes, ramps up to my welding amperage, which I like to stay in the 35 to 40 amp range, and I can start welding. Now the other little tip that I found that's useful for me to help it from blowing through right away is I will take my filler wire when I'm using my flashlight, and right when I'm well, ready to start ramping it up to the, the actual welding amperage, I will put my filler wire right over top of where I want that weld to happen, and I'll let off the trigger or push down my pedal, and what'll happen is that will actually have the filler wire melt and it'll flow right into your weld seam and it'll give you that split second where it won't blow through. Once you get that first uh, tack or dab of filler wire going, it's easy to start moving from there and it'll keep you from actually just blowing through right away. When you shock the, uh, the weld seam with a weld or heat, a lot of times it tends to just blow apart. So by putting the filler wire right in there, and starting, it will actually just like flow into the weld, which uh, is very helpful for me. And then from there, I can just start working across the, uh, the weld seam and working and uh, filling everything up as you would normally. So that is my number three uh, tip for TIG welding sheet metal. All right, so there were my top three tips for getting started on TIG welding sheet metal. I will remind you guys that it is something that is very difficult to do and takes years and years to master. And myself, even doing it for years, I still have times where I blow through and it can get very frustrating. So just keep with it. Make sure your panels fit as good as you can. Follow those few tips and you'll find you'll be doing much better sheet repairs after a little bit of practice. Thanks guys for watching. Catch you later.